Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to like and subscribe for a doctorate degree next time you play. Maybe. In celebration of Birds of Prey and the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn, we're building one Harley Quinn. Historically, she's fanatically obsessed with the Joker, but more recent stories focus on her refining who she is on her own. Of course, she still did some standard post-breakup things, taking care of your pets, getting a plant, vigilanteism, the standard stuff. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need a hammer, which could be used metaphorically to rebuild our life and literally to break people's jaws. Next, we'll get some puppers with big old goofy smiles full of sharp, vicious teeth. Finally, we'll make sure that our talent for hench person's ship and sidekickery is useful in any squad. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep an eye on your dexterity and charisma. Dexterity will be number one. You gave up in your successful medical career to become a clown. Charisma next, clowns are either hilarious or terrifying depending on who you'd ask, but either way, that's charisma. Wisdom after that, you did fail one major insight check, but since medicine is tied to wisdom, this is how we're gonna get our medical degree. Follow that up with constitution, the bat family hits hard. Their rogues gallery hits hard. And living in a morally wishy-washy place that you do means that you're going to be fighting both. Intelligence is a little low, even though we don't really need it since medicine and insight would be the skills I would associate with a psychologist. It would feel wrong giving her a negative modifier and we'll dump strength as we can make some early moves to make our traditionally beefy weapons into something a little more flexible. Harley is a human, but half elf would work really well. It gives you extra skills and a big bump to your charisma, but varying humans can pick up a feat and the lucky feat gives you three luck die, which are d20s you can apply to get advantage on an attack roll, skill check, or saving throw, or you can use them to apply disadvantage on an attack against you. If there's something you and Mr. J have in common, it's sheer dumb luck. Except for, you know, meeting Mr. J. That was bad luck. Add your two free points to dexterity and charisma, grab sleight of hand for your skill of choice, and build your own background for insight and medicine proficiencies. Call it the mental health professional background. We'll kick things off as a fighter. We need martial weapon proficiency as quickly as possible, and this will load you up with all the weapons in the world. You get two skills from the fighter list, grab acrobatics and animal handling for that sweet, sweet day we meet our furry babies. For your fighting style, I recommend archery at this point, adding two to your attack rolls with ranged weapons. Guns are easier to use from the time with this build, so just point and shoot. We'll also reflavor crossbows to be guns here. They'll basically fill the same role as a one-handed blaster. Not every DM is into putting firearms into their game. Keep in mind, you can only fire one shot per round due to the loading property at this point, but we'll fix that up soon enough. Finally, you get second wind, letting you recover 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action once per short rest. Again, it's pretty likely you could go from a fight with Nightwing to a fight with Penguin in the same night. It's rough being on your own. Bouncing over to Monk really quickly. A one-level dip in Monk can give you a lot of perks that carry over further into the build. Unarmored defense makes your AC 10 plus your dexterity and wisdom modifier while you're not wearing armor. Technically, I think you're wearing leather, but it's not like that's what stops you from taking damage. You avoid damage by moving. While unarmored, you can use martial arts and monk weapons. Monk weapons got tweaked by the new class feature variants Unearthed Arcana, letting you choose martial weapons you have proficiency with as long as they don't have the heavy or two-handed property. Warhammer and Quarterstaff both work for this definition. The former deals 1d8 one-handed or 1d10 two-handed, the latter dealing 1d6 one-handed, or 1d8 two-handed. The Harley Hammer, and I don't think the baseball bat has a special name, would fit these definitions. Fair warning, it sounds like this may be tweaked before hitting official release, but that could just be wording to make it more clear. Either way, the quarterstaff works for an old monk weapon definition as well, since it's simple, so you can use that if your DM doesn't like Unearthed Arcana, or if that all gets deleted when those changes are finalized. Anyway, monk weapons let you use your dexterity modifier instead of your strength, so now we don't have to invest in two physical stats. Martial arts also lets you make unarmed attacks that deal 1d4 and make an unarmed attack as a bonus action after you take the attack action, so you can bash and kick someone in the same turn. Back over to fighter now, second level fighters get action start, letting you make two actions in the same turn once per short rest. This means you'll be able to swing your hammer twice and kick someone in the face, which can probably knock out a smaller enemy in the first round, like a general two-faced thug or lesser Robin. <coughs> Damien! <coughs> Sorry, I had some crappy Robin stuck in my throat. Third level fighters can choose a martial archetype. Champion will let us lean into the luck manipulation. You'll get improved critical, letting you land a critical hit with a 19 or a 20 with weapon attacks, not spell attacks, like I said in the cyborg video, because whoops, I'm dumb. Not that you have to worry about that. This build doesn't have any magic because Harley isn't a magician. Fourth level fighters get an ability score improvement or a feat. The crossbow expert feat lets you fire a crossbow within melee range without disadvantage and fire a hand crossbow as a bonus action after you attack with a one-handed weapon. 
which a hand crossbow is, and you can fire a crossbow twice in the same round, no more reloading penalty. You're great with a hammer. Why not fan it? Fifth level fighters can really fan that hammer with an extra attack, letting you make two attacks as your action, not counting your bonus action crossbow shot or unarmed attack. Whether you're shooting or smashing, more attacks are more gooder. Sixth level fighters get an ability score improvement. More dexterity will help all of your attacks and your AC so you can nimbly dodge Batgirl's punches and show her why you're the real Batgirl. Because, because you hit her with a bat. It's a play on words. Sorry if it hurts. But if you really want to hurt people with a play on words, why not explore your Harlequin aesthetic with a few bar levels? That's right, there is magic. I was lying to you. Bards learn cantrips. Vicious mockery lets you insult someone so hard they get a headache, forcing a wisdom save of 8 plus your proficiency bonus and charisma modifier, dealing 2d4 psychic damage to those that fail and giving them disadvantage on their next attack roll. Always remember, cantrip damage scales with your total level, not your class level. So getting them late in the game isn't a bad move. For your other cantrip, light is helpful, creates a light that will let you see in the dark, you don't have dark vision. Unless you're doing the half-elf Harley thing, then find something else. You already changed the build, obviously you know what you're doing. For your first level spells, Animal Friendship charms a beast that feels a wisdom save for 24 hours, making it friendly to you until either you or an ally attacks it. If someone you're working with kicks your dog, break up with them, because it was probably Mr. J, he's a real jerk. Charm Person is like Animal Friendship, except for humanoids, so it's objectively worse, and it lasts for only an hour. What a waste of a spell, most humanoids won't even bite someone for you. Feather Fall lets you reduce falling damage for five fallen creatures as a reaction, I'm mostly grabbing this because you did a swan dive into some ace chemicals and didn't die. But hey, this might make them re named the Suicide Squad, the Still Alive and Getting the Help We Desperately Need Gang. Disguise Self lets you change your appearance for an hour. People can see through it with an investigation check against your spell DC, but you've got performance proficiency, so hopefully they don't think they need to. Wait, we don't have performance proficiency? You get a free skill from Bard. Get performance, obviously. Finally, the main draw of the Bard class, Bardic Inspiration, are D6s. You can give to an ally to add to an attack roll or saving throw as a bonus action. You've got an amount of these equal to your charisma modifier per long rest. You've got plenty of experience as an assistant. You might as well use it. Second level Bards get Song of Rest, letting your allies heal an extra D6 on short rests. I haven't seen Birds of Prey yet, but in the trailer, the girl does some lounge singing. Not surprising. You're a jack of all trades, letting you add half your proficiency bonus to skills you don't have proficiency with. You're kind of an all-arounder. This works well for that. For this level spells, I don't know. Long Strider makes you run 10 feet faster per round and doesn't require concentration. You're in pretty good shape. Third level bard is where this all starts coming together. You get expertise in two skills of your choice, I'd say acrobatics and medicine. Performance can be good for role playing, but if you want a metagame, medicine is used pretty frequently to stabilize fallen allies. To make your decision harder, take lore bard for your bardic college. I know we use it a lot, but we do that because it's so malleable. You can use it to get to more special things more faster. First, you get three skills. Deception, Stealth, and Persuasion are always nice. You also get Cutting Words, letting you subtract a Bardic Inspiration die from an attack roll, damage roll, or ability check that an enemy is trying to make using your reaction, letting you insult someone so badly they get worse at fighting. Of course, you can also get second level spells. Knock blows up a lock, making a sound loud enough to be heard 300 feet away. This is a good time to mention you're a thief for sure, but not really a sneaky one, which is why we're going Bard instead of Rogue. Fourth level Bards get an ability score improvement. Cap your dexterity. Your spell saves aren't super important for this build at the moment, but we'll still get some charisma later. For this level spell, Pyrotechnics lets you turn a non-magical flame into fireworks or a smoke bomb. The fireworks force a constitution save on creatures in a 10-foot radius, blinding those that fail for one round. Smoke heavily obscures a 20-foot radius for a minute or until it's dispersed. Smoke grenades and flashbangs are helpful for heists. Disoriented people aren't as good at holding on to their money. Who knew? Fifth level bards get Font of Inspiration, letting you recover your inspiration die on short rests instead of long rests. And that die is bumped up to a d8. For this level spell, Stinking Cloud sets off a stink bomb, creating a 20 foot radius cloud of gas that forces constitution saves on those inside. Failing that, they have to spend their action throwing up. You don't necessarily even have to cast this spell. Just let people know it's on your list, and you won't have to use it if they put the money in the bag. Sixth level bards get Counter Charm, letting you spend your action to give your allies advantage on saves against being charmed or frightened. It's not the best use of an action, but thankfully you also get additional magical secrets from Lore Bard, letting you steal two spells from other classes. Conjure Animals is from the Druid or Ranger list. It summons a beast of challenge rating 2 or lower, 2 beasts of challenge rating 1 or lower, 4 beasts of challenge rating 1 half or lower, or 8 beasts of challenge rating 1 fourth or lower. Hyenas are classified as challenge rating 0, making them worse than Mastiffs, which are just pretty big dogs. I'd reflavor a Dire Wolf to be your puppers, they're large beasts, which means that they're not only stronger, 
they're mountable. They hang out for an hour or until Studio Ghibli puts a copyright strike on your video. If you understood that joke, you're an OG barbarian. Respect. Since you can grab two spells from other lists, what about Fireball for the other one? It forces a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 20 foot radius sphere, dealing 8d6 fire damage to those that fail. You probably have a bomb, grenade, or missile on you, but probably not more than two, which works for your spell slots. Back over to Fighter now, 7th level champions are remarkable athletes, letting you add half your proficiency bonus to any strength, dexterity, or constitution saving throw you don't have proficiency with. I would say this pairs with Jack of All Trades, as technically that doesn't use your proficiency bonus, it uses half your proficiency bonus. Let me know if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's how that works. 8th level fighters get another ability score improvement, now's the time to invest in your charisma. You might as well round that up with your wisdom to get better AC while you're at it. Odd numbers don't improve modifiers, they give me headaches. Ninth level fighters get indomitable, letting you re-roll a failed saving throw once per long rest. Very useful, you're just a regular human person in a world full of Kryptonians and gods. It's not like they could just give you a kryptonite pill that would make you super strong. It sounds like a lazy writing device someone would use if they wanted to justify a Superman Harley Quinn fight. That would be a real injustice to both characters. Tenth level champions can grab another fighting style. Great weapon fighting lets you re-roll ones and twos on damage die with weapons you're wielding two-handed. There's no requirement for it to be a strength-based weapon, so your versatile baseball bat and your heart hammer still work thanks to that monk ability. Like I said, one level dip will work for you throughout the build, it's really nice. 11th level fighters get another extra attack, for 3 attacks with your action, and an unarmed or crossbow attack with your bonus action. With your maxed out modifier, you get to deal 20 damage per round before you even roll a die, which is really solid considering you've also got 6 caster levels. 12th level fighters get another ability score improvement, this is our last one. Might as well help our saves out as much as possible by bumping your charisma modifier. It'll also give you another bardic inspiration die, and you've got extra ways to make those useful with your cutting words, it's all very nice. Our capstone is the 13th level of fighter for another use of indomitable per long rest. At the end of the day, you're a survivor. Take a deep breath, figure yourself out, and do the right thing in your own special way. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you're incredibly well-rounded, with plenty of skills, great stats from extra fighter levels, and jack of all trades rounding up everything to a positive modifier. You're also attacking rapidly with a capped modifier, letting you pump out consistent damage every round, up close, and at a distance with your crossbow. Finally, your bardic inspiration die and spell list make you an excellent support player on any squad. For weaknesses, you're not as bulky as a frontline fighter should be, with around 130 HP and 17 AC, making you somewhat middling for a hammer fighter. You're also short on spells, with a conjuring of puppies and two fireballs expending all your best slots in three rounds. Finally, your strength score is low, which means gusts of winds or baneful shoves could bounce you around like a pinball. But you've got luck on your side and a survivor's spirit. Get back up, swing that hammer, and do it all with a big old smile on your face. Just make sure you're backing someone who will have your back. Maybe a druid who's almost impossible to kill? It's at least better than a juggalo. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We make two builds every week. And if you like me, check out my other channel, Tulak and Mega, where I play video games. Get this on the internet.